She's the most controversial woman in the history of literature for her infidelity. At the age of 16, she was arranged by her family to marry her husband, who was 12 years older than her, and entered into a dead-end marriage. But in the eighth year of her marriage, she accidentally met the love of her life, and her life began as a tragedy. Anna Karenina was an aristocrat, elegant and charming, a famous beauty in St. Petersburg society. That day, she rushes to Moscow by train to deal with a dispute between her brother and sister-in-law. But as soon as the train enters the station, Anna meets a handsome officer. As the fog lifted, the two of them looked at each other and seemed to feel the heartbeat of the moment. Excuse me. Anna stepped off the train but couldn't help turning back. Then their time was taken up by their respective families. Anna happily took her brother's hand and was about to leave. The wheels turn and there's a scream. Anna saw a man die on the tracks. The shocking sight of the man's death was so horrifying that Anna couldn't stop thinking about it. She had a bad feeling. In fact, the end of Anna's life was foretold at the beginning of the story. On the carriage ride home, her brother explained to Anna the reasons for the dispute. But when Anna met her sister-in-law, she didn't take sides or defend her brother's wrongdoing. She calmly analyzed the situation with her sister-in-law because under the prevailing social circumstances, even if it was the man who did the wrong, a divorce would only ruin the woman's reputation and she had to think about her five children. After Anna's mediation, her sister-in-law finally forgave her husband for his infidelity. But at that moment, Anna never thought that she would face the same problem one day. At the dinner party, Anna looked through the crowd and saw the officer she met at the train station. Bronsky was young and handsome. This time he finally found the courage to ask Anna to dance with him. The two of them twirled to the joyous music. The distance between them made the atmosphere between them become more and more ambiguous. Anna is changing subtly, but her sister-in-law's sister, Kiki, was very sad when she saw this scene because Kitty had been crushing on the handsome Vronsky for years. The sensitive Anna noticed Kitty's eyes, realizing that she had crossed the line with Vronsky. She immediately found an excuse to leave and embarked on the train back to St. Petersburg. Anna chose to run away before her emotions became uncontrollable, even though the scene of the dance with Vronsky was already fresh in her mind. The train stopped in the middle of the journey, and Anna was ready to get off for some fresh air. Instead, she sees Vronsky again in the cold, windy night. What are you doing here? You know that I have come to be where you are. I cannot help myself. Give me if what I say offends you. You shouldn't say that. And I beg you, if you're a gentleman, to forget this as I will forget it. Anna tried to suppress her feelings of infidelity, but Vronsky had no intention of stopping his courting. He followed Anna to Saint Petersburg to all the balls and tried to create an opportunity to meet Anna. He even got his best friend to match him with Anna. Vronsky's advances are too blamed and cause gossip. I've been wanting to tell you that you behaved badly, very badly indeed. You think I don't know that I behaved badly? Who made me? Then, do this for me. Never utter those words again and let us be good friends. Anna wants Vronsky out of Saint Petersburg. Vronsky is obsessed with the idea that he can only be happy with Anna. His passion and insanity did make ripples in Anna's heart again and again. Compared to the dullness of her marriage, this kind of love awakens Anna completely. As the ice melts, they finally cross the dangerous border. The noblewoman removes her black velvet jacket to reveal her white skin wrapped in white lace. Her blue earrings reflect her light-colored pupils. Her eyes became even more tender, making the man who loved her completely lose control. Anna was also enjoying the pleasure of the moment. Forgetting all about her husband, Anna had just returned home from her date when she received a warning from her husband, Karanin. That by thoughtlessness and indiscretion, you may cause yourself to be talked about in society. As a high society lady, Anna's every word and action is scrutinized. Vronsky's mad pursuit of her has already attracted a lot of attention. But Karanin doesn't know that the two of them have developed an intimate relationship. He's more concerned with his reputation and warns Anna to act with nobility in mind. But Karanin's nagging was becoming more and more offensive to Anna. By now, she is deeply involved in a dangerous relationship. Vronsky's love for her is hot and intense, and it has rekindled her passion outside of her dead-end marriage. She was even pregnant with Vronsky's child. She was so overwhelmed by love that she wanted to run away with Vronsky. But Vronsky's mother had a different view. Vronsky was about to get a promotion, but he wanted to give it up. You only get one chance at a career. Why throw it all away on some passion? A brilliant worldly liaison I would approve of, but not this desperate. Soon after, at a horse race, Vronsky fell over a hurdle. Anna screamed uncontrollably, but this action confirms that she and Vronsky are having an affair. Karanin tries to save face by trying to salvage the situation. I again offer you my arm, if you want to be going. Back in the carriage, both of them are preoccupied. Karanin breaks the silence. He closes the window and accuses Anna of her behavior. Anna, 
On the other hand, doesn't want to pretend anymore. I love him and I miss mistress. I can't endure you. And I'm desperately unhappy. You can do what you like with me. Back at the manor, Anna writes a letter telling Vronsky that she has confessed everything to her husband. She wanted Vronsky to come and get her immediately. And Karanin, who had a reputation to uphold, was enraged. Even though he knew that his wife had been cheating on him, Karanin would never agree to divorce Anna in order to save his reputation. He demanded that Anna be a good wife and mother from now on. Otherwise, Anna will never see her son again. Anna had to compromise for the sake of her son. Bronsky arrived and couldn't even speak to her, but watched the harmonious family leave. But will this be the end of their love affair? The woman is suffering from a difficult labor. The red blood on the sheets is frightening. She loses the baby after an agonizing struggle. Her husband, who had been away on business, rushed home, only to find her lover, Vronsky, also in the room, helpless. I'm entirely in your hands. Karanin was furious, but as he watched Anna lying in bed, weak and begging for forgiveness, Karanin gave in. Only when Anna fell into a peaceful sleep did Karanin leave in peace. He would not condemn Vronsky, but he asked him to leave immediately. Vronsky came home ashamed and wanted to end his life. But in the end, he didn't have the courage and determination. And Anna, after getting well, chose to leave Karanin once again. Vronsky resigned from his post, gave up his power, and took Anna to live in Italy. At first, their life was sweet and peaceful, but as the passion wore off, even the trivialities became obstacles. Vronsky wanted to return to Russia, to his former social circle. He feels that life here has no meaning for him. Anna is persuaded to go back to Russia with him, but little by little she realizes that this decision is too much for her to bear. The two protagonists are also at the center of public opinion. Vronsky returns to St. Petersburg and still manages to make a name for himself in high society. Anna, on the other hand, is the subject of controversy and scorn. She's wrapped up in her own insecurities and losses, and the relationship between the two of them has developed many cracks. Why could I go out? I love you and nothing else matters to me. So long as you haven't changed, so long as you still love me. But no sooner had Vronsky calmed Anna down than he rushed to the theater to meet the young girl his mother had arranged for him. Anna was left completely alone. To win back her love, Anna offers to return to the Italian countryside. Vronsky won't go back to Italy with Anna. Oh really, this is becoming unbearable. Why do you try my patience? It has its limits. What do you mean by that? I mean... After an argument, they parted on bad terms. Wrapped up in anxiety, Anna becomes more and more sensitive and suspicious, drinking all day long and even going into a trance. Until the day, she saw Vronsky returning from a carriage with a young woman. This completely shattered Anna's defenses. The two of them had another heated argument, and Vronsky lost all patience with Anna's questioning. This is intolerable! I will be sorry for this. Anna left for the train station alone in the carriage. She had nowhere to turn with the indifferent stares of the passers-by along the way. Some were busy. Some were happy, but Anna couldn't find the meaning of her existence. She had given up her wealth, her position and even her family for her true love. But now she realizes the folly of that decision. She walked slowly to the platform and waited for the train to arrive. And then, in desperation, she leapt off. Did she do it to avenge Vronsky's unconscionable betrayal? Or did she despair of her future? Anna chose to end her life in what she felt was the cruelest way possible. Vronsky was devastated by Anna's death. There was no point in belated repentance. He was so devastated that he went to war with the determination to die. This was the end of a love affair not accepted by the public. Compared to the novel Anna Karenina, the movie is less about the social background and more about Anna's struggles and joys in dealing with her emotions. All happy families are happy alike. All unhappy families are unhappy in their own way. Anna's mistake is to equate love with life, not realizing that love will eventually run out. Once you lose it, it's all gone.